you know, I'm just going to jump straight into it. You know, the, it's crazy how the world of boxing view me and my brother. Um, it wasn't our intentions for you to look at us as some individuals that's running around trying to cause drama, trying to fight every opponent, trying to fight every opponent's team and all of that. Um, now, you gotta, you guys got to go back over for the ones that do talk a lot and the ones that do kind of make this trying to make that possible, I'm trying to make that true, which we, and I appreciate Luke, because me and my brother are really good guys, you know, like, um, we had a rough upbringing, of course, but that's not what we harvest on, we don't we don't dwell on what we've been through in the past, we just focus on what we have in front of us. Um, J-Rock talked a lot of trash, you know what I'm saying? J-Rock ran his mouth, my brother sat back and was quiet. I looked at my brother around that time, and I remember it was about December, we would we were not even along that way at that time. But um, I remember him <laughs> being right? so focused. We was, we was uh, really kind of like bumping heads, at, bumping heads at around that time. But it was good. Uh, I still was there supporting him. Still came to his camp. Still did everything I normally did. Just wasn't in his camp that much. And I remember J-Rock running his mouth with him, talking so much, and doing all of these crazy things. And then, you know, we get in the ring. And I remember at the weigh-ins, I remember that I was running around trying to get his rehydration stuff, just the normal stuff that we do. And, um, you know, Maul get in there and knock him out in the, in, in the fifth, sixth round. The, the, the knockdown with the jab, all of these things. And then all of a sudden, you know, after that fight, I'm like, okay, that was good. I got to go in there and do my thing. And that's when I got ready to fight Hadley. So I was training one in for Hadley, went to Dallas, trained with Earl so much. You know, did the whole normal nine yards. Once again, we come back to the park play. You know, Halley, the whole team. My, I, I always try to tell my people to keep it cool. You know, but um, I can't control someone, especially if they, they you know, get barked at or get bit at. So my, my guys, they do what they're going to do. That's period. You always need to get that under control. Okay, if we're in New York, Vegas, Cali, anywhere, Miami. Um, but you're going to get you're gonna get aggressive twins. We were doubted. We are still about it. I barely starting to feel that the boxing world is giving us the respect. They're barely starting to say, oh, these twins. Yo, we've been boxing. We've been professional since I was seven. You know, Lou didn't sign my brother early on in his career, unfortunately. But it's okay. oh, and that was a major fuck. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I really want to speak the facts right now, you know. So Lou didn't sign my brother at the, at the beginning, which my brother made more than and, and we're the type of guys, you know, we kind of we kind of hold on to that a little bit. I told my brother, let that go. Lou loves good people. He, you know, he good. He good with us. And it, it's hard for my brother to kind of understand that because that's just not how we was brought up. It just but, made me fight harder though, cause like, you know, I was exactly. Thinking, the same I was thing. Thinking, hey, damn, what if man Lou might be trying to get me beat or something? Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah. So the same thing, the, the same thing that with the uh, the same thing with with Eric Lou. He's running his mouth talking crap. Man, I didn't want to fly out to New York and do no press conference. And still made it happen. You know, I'm telling Al, hey, what the hell? What's going on? This dude ain't part of it. He to be fighting to world culture. I need to be fighting her. This need to be, you know. Al, no. Hey, you got it. You, you fought for the Vegas world title. You won it. Now you got to defend yourself against two number one guys this year. That's what you got to do. That's the game plan this year. I did it. I'm cool now. Y'all see me? I gain weight. I'm I'm back chunky. Gonna enjoy the enjoy. Uh, we did we did uh, Halloween with Chris Brown. Now we're gonna have Thanksgiving. We're gonna kick it with everybody. Anybody who want to enjoy, we gonna have a good year. This was the best year in boxing for the Charlotte Twins so far. <laughs> to me, you know, uh, so all of the years. And then once again, we've been boxing. I've been boxing ten years, bro. Ten years now. So we've been doing this. Now all of a sudden they're saying, oh, now these guys not come out. We do every PED test they ever come bringing us to. We keep the boxing world clean. We want to keep it clean. Because now they're like, what is going on with these 154-pounders? Why are they knocking guys out? Why are they defeating guys? But now, really, what's the, what's the aggression after the ring? Let's talk about what happens on the post fight. It's always going to be that way because you got these guys barking at us. And we bark back. We fight back. We, we, we almost get in trouble with the commissioners, getting fined and stuff. I got fined before, you know, okay, got tomatoes and cans and all kinds of sodas and beer stoned in me and still walked in there and got fined. All because I was happy for my brother knocking out someone that was barking so much. So K9 did it, he did it to K9, you know. Um, so I just want the world of boxing to, <coughs> let's put that 
oh, the Charles Queens ain't getting their respect no more. That's old now. We running the game. We in this sport. We won 54 champions. He's ranked number one for Canelo and Triple G. He really wants that fight, and hope he get it. Hope he get it in 18, and I hope I get a unification in uh, 18. And um, let's win all the belts. Shit, I, I want to win them all. I mean, because that's how you get paid in this world. And I'm, I'm trying to stay fly. I'm trying to keep my people around me nice and happy. And we're just going to keep living life and keep training hard when the, when the camp come. Hey, Y'all gotta dig more into our life. And that's all that we ask for anyone to do. Man, we always wanted. That's one thing me and Mom wanted. We always wanted uh, all access. Showtime, where you at? Come, come to Houston now, baby. Come to California, come to Houston and follow us around for a few days. We chop, you know, but we eat out. We hang out with girls, too. You know, we married, you know, whatever. But it's whatever. You know, we have a You know, so, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, I'm proud of my brother. I'm really proud of myself. I'm proud of my brother. And um, we just want, we, we have to good guys. You know, look, check our hands, keep them moving. Start hating on us, throwing up shade. I'm not, hey, don't come in. If you, if you don't like the Charlos, look, just keep the hate down. Don't even come interview me. Don't talk to me. Just stay out of my way. Stay out of my way. Because uh, I, I mean, I'm a fighter, okay? So uh, you want to get up and talk? <laughs> Maul tweeted out that he's like, you know what? I would love for it to be a, a middleweight tournament. Bring it. Like, we're the best fighters in the world. But there was a junior middleweight uh, tournament. I already felt like I messed that up already. Would you oh watch something like that? <laughs> no, I already messed it up. Yes. I already messed it up for the being their favorites. And pretty much everybody in the top yeah. 10 already. Mm -hmm. You got them. Right. Hey, Last question. Can we try to see, see you possibly fight three times next year? No. I probably won't fight three times next year. I wanted to fight three times this year. I'd get ready again to fight in December if I could fight in December. That Cotto and Ali fighting all apart, and somebody get hurt, I'm, hey, I'm running that thing. Next. You best believe I'm be at somebody's office trying to get that fight happen. Hey, make it happen later December. Let it happen in January. Who cares? I'll be ready. You know, I ain't. I just fought like three weeks ago. You know, started that training already. So. Do you feel that like being good on the microphone is key to like you know like your marketability going up because this year you know 2017 y'all been a lot more vocal but yet you know you're getting a lot of flack from like fans but in boxing that's been known to sell fights well i mean we've been more vocal as far as what we want but i don't necessarily think is uh we gotta be more vocal uh, uh we gotta be more vocal about about uh, you know the reason why they're not respecting us, and we gotta be more woke about the pay and all that kind of stuff, you know. And then I believe they'll start respecting. Like, oh, we'll, once you become a household name, you, you, all that other stuff, you know, crashes out. So hopefully, you guys can all fly out in Houston one day, and you know, come and see me and my brother fight, and be in the media press, and have a press conference, and all that kind of stuff. We want to do this in Houston, you know. Sugar and gum. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. And.